welcome to FinTech Forward. I'm Dale Lazic, and I'm excited to be chatting today with Mark Gazet, CEO of ThetaRay, a leading global company that helps enterprises thwart financial crimes using artificial intelligence. Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here and meet you again. It's really great to reconnect. I've had so much fun following your company and interviewing you and other senior executives over the years. And I've had a unique opportunity to go behind the scenes and see how you are innovating and also to see live demos. I had the opportunity to chat with one of your founding members, Professor Ronald Koifman, and he described how he is using machine learning and actually training the AI to recognize anomalies. And over the years, I've been very interested to see how you've grown your portfolio of solutions, always with an eye of staying a step ahead of the fraudsters and criminals. And uh, I'm very interested to understand a bit more about how you developed the concept for Theta Ray. What gave you the idea? You know, initially when I have met uh, the two professors, Professor Koifman and Professor Averbuch, um, they told me about their idea and the work they've done over the uh, last 20 years uh, to build what they now we call artificial intuition. At that time, we didn't have the name, but basically an AI that will allow computers to um, make exercises that will be closer to what we as human beings call uh, intuition, common sense, uh, gut feelings, basically, where even when we don't know what we are looking for to find uh, dangerous attacks. And um, this is my fifth company. My previous company uh, sold solutions to government agencies and helped them to identify bad guys. And when I found those are Algorithms that was they were much better than anything I've seen that governments have been using. So I said, let's try it. And initially, um, we started with General Electric and helped them to identify cybersecurity attacks on critical infrastructure. We help airline companies to identify attacks on um, uh, airplanes. And when in 2016, two of the largest banks in the world came to us and told us, look, we have a problem. Um, we see a new wave of attacks. They call it financial cybercrime, which is basically attacks that are uh, done remotely, uh, done in a way that was designed to circumvent existing systems. And they said, look, we don't have any solution because all existing solutions are based on rules and thresholds and signatures and models. But bad guys know exactly what we are looking for. So it doesn't really work. Can you help us? We tried. And the results were amazing. So we decided that we will focus now on very large financial institutions and uh, financial cybercrime that today becomes, and especially now in the COVID-19 days, becomes even more devastating. Exactly. That's an extraordinary evolutionary journey. How many people are on your team today and how are you growing? So we're growing very fast. We just made this calculation uh, in three, three years or uh, three and a half years, we grew 25 times. Uh, obviously, it's easier when you're small and then you grow. Uh, today, we have about 80 people uh, all around the world. Um, we try to keep the number pretty small, but the quality of the people uh, is very high. You've uh, met with a few of my team. Some of them uh, were executives in much, much larger companies. Uh, and then they joined Tetere and growing fast and really love what we do and also feel that uh, we really protect organizations against um, attacks that become uh, even more devastating. Just, let's just take an example. Uh, today, bad guys will not come to a branch of a bank and shoot in, you know, threaten the clerks to shoot them up and take the money. It happens in movies. Even the pre-COVID-19 situation, it all went to the world of cyber. So they put a server somewhere in a remote country, steal 25 cents from a bank account. The server does it automatically hundreds of millions of times. And then they took 20, 30 million dollars, disappear. 
and that's it. You can't find them anymore. Now, today, it's even more uh, than just fraud. Today, it's money laundering. Today, they use this money to finance terrorist funding, um, human trafficking, sex slavery, uh, narco trafficking. Uh, so not only are we growing and helping those organizations uh, to protect themselves and avoid uh, the loss of money, but it's much more than that. It's a loss of reputation and also saving lives of people. Tell me, what, what inspired the name Theta Ray? Okay, so it's an interesting story. When I joined the company, founders told me, look, Mark, you join as a CEO. You have the right to do whatever you want, even they change the name. And they just, just, they loved it. They felt that it means something. So I started to look and try to understand, shall I change the name? And what I found is actually something very interesting that for the founders came very natural. Theta waves is the state of your brain your mind, just before you fell asleep, you know, when sometimes really good answers come. And there is this story about um, Archimedes, the ancient Greek uh, scientist that was supposed to find a, a way to a mass of a crown for a king. And uh, then he went into the water, almost fell asleep, and then he had this Eureka moment. He said, Eureka, I found a solution. So research says that this eureka moment is where your brain transmits theta waves, so or theta rays. So basically, we, I kept the name of the company, and uh, it means the state of mind when mind produces results to us that we don't even expect to hear, like dealing with unknown unknowns. And that's exactly what we do. And it's a Greek letter, uh, theta, of course. And I will make the use of the fact that we and have this digital video interview and I will change my background uh, to the Greek alphabet and you can see the letter theta. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that story. I, lo I love that. You know, I, I get that sometimes too as a writer. I get the eureka moments. That's why I always keep a pad and pen by my bed. Yeah, absolutely. I have to tell you that before joining Theta Ray, I didn't really believe in intuition. Like I know that people said intuition, they told me that I have a good intuition. I never took decisions that were intuitive decisions. I always needed data and data and data and analysis. And now I have mathematical proof that intuition is working. So suddenly it's much more easier for me to say, oh, you no, know, my gut feeling says that I should do something and I do it. And so, yeah, <laughs> sometimes science and uh, life uh, goes together. I agree. Tell me um, about the early days. How did you gain traction? Yeah, it wasn't easy because what we did was considered to, by people to be a little bit crazy. And it was a bit easier for me to overcome it because, again, it's my fifth company and my companies did things that people thought are crazy. One of my companies brought, was the first internet service provider in Israel, I believe, probably in the Middle East, one of the first. People said nobody would use internet. And when my uh, voice over IP company uh, started to grow, people said, people will, like, nobody will talk to computers. Uh, so here also people said, look, computers will never be able to have intuition. What are you, what are you talking about? Uh, the good news is that we just kept uh, speaking about it, approaching organizations, and we decided to go and try to fix really difficult problems with the very largest organizations in the world, like General Electric and uh, uh, very large banks. And I found something very interesting, and it follows me in all my companies. When you come to these big guys, the, it's not easy. You need to speak their language. You need to be able to uh, work over the red tape. But if you don't give up and you have something really cool, that actually will be the first one to uh, at least try it. Uh, they will be the only adapter uh, because usually the problems are big enough, uh, like the problem we described here, uh, which is fighting with human trafficking and uh, terrorist funding. For large banks, it can be uh, devastating. Uh, so they will be much more flexible and will have much more means to at least try it. And when they try, you know, and we show good results and good service that they continue to work with us. Uh, so the decision I've made was a decision that most of the startups avoid. Let's go to the big guys. 
and fight with companies like IBM, Palantir, and others. Uh, luckily for us, it did work uh, well. As you solve really big problems, are you beginning to see patterns, and is that helping you become more agile? Yes, absolutely. We do, uh, we do see patterns uh, of acceptance, I would say. Uh, initially, it was very difficult for uh, very large organizations to even consider that computers can do better than very uh, experienced investigators. Uh, I also think that, in a way, the world moved to the direction that was uh, making uh, the need for our solutions uh, more and more urgent. Um, historically, it was okay uh, to uh, use fake checks or stolen credit cards, etc. Today, it's all about digital uh, banking. Um, you know, maybe I will use an example of a COVID-19 situation. I know that this uh, interview will last forever, but I guess uh, some of the uh, viewers would like to understand what's going on right now. And sure. we all know that when there is a situation of crisis, the level of uh, crime is going up. It's always true. Uh, but this time, actually, the cyber financial crime is going up. Because even before that, bad guys didn't feel like going to a branch of a bank and physically trying to rob the bank. It's dangerous. Today, they can you know, catch uh, COVID-19. So by uh, design, most of the criminal activities now are remote. And uh, banks employees that are supposed to uh, be watchdogs of the banks. You know, the thousands of people, sometimes tens of thousands of people that... Uh, cover all the money laundering attempts, etc. they now don't have access to information. They work from home. Um, and existing systems produce very high level of false alarms. So many banks now report that not only the level of crime went up 400%, but they have backlogs in many cases, hundreds of thousands of cases that are backlogged that they don't see. And so basically this pattern of more and more criminal activities going and starting to happen in the cyber domain, combined with the fact that the level of false alarms is going and becoming higher and higher, because bad guys know exactly what existing rule-based systems are looking for, uh, makes uh, the acceptance for our solutions better. And another thing that is interesting historically, the fact that we increase ROI, return on investment for our customers, was not always accepted in a very uh, good way because it means in some cases that some people, uh, computers can replace some of the people. Now, because of the situation, it actually becomes uh, more and more uh, acceptable. And, and the last but not least, extensive use of what we call multi-channel fraud. So there will be a combination, again, automatic and sometimes an autonomous combination between a phone call, sometimes recorded phone call, email, messenger, and web access. And this combination uh, of multi-channel uh, environment that serves the bad guys is something that we feel that makes the need for our solution even more uh, urgent. You know, people tend to think of financial crimes as in terms of maybe just uh, cyber crime or e-commerce or mobile app or something like that. But, but in fact, I think it's really important to understand that if they're operating at scale, they're attacking every surface, not just one particular one, but they're, they're, uh, they're going into every single channel. And I think that your multidimensional approach is, is very interesting in this aspect because you're actually everywhere that they are. Absolutely. And, you know, if I take just one of the examples, um, ATMs, you know, ATM is a, an IoT device these days. And I think we discussed it, so bad guys hacked the ATMs remotely. And then every time uh, they want it, they just push the button somewhere in our country and local criminal came and collected a few bills. Now, of course, then they... Uh, shut down the camera so there is no footage, and then they erased all the uh, traces. But then they actually took the money that they collected and laundered the money and converted it into uh, uh, 
blockchain currency, in this case it was Ethereum and uh, Bitcoins, and then move them uh, using a money laundering uh, practices away from those countries to some remote locations. So we see that it starts with hacking the ATM, but at the end of the day, it's the entire cycle of money laundering and uh, fraudulent activities. And as you said, bad guys are very experienced, very smart. They have access to all the AI. They don't care about the fact that we have patents and our algorithms are patent protected. They will just use similar algorithms if they want. Um, so the fight becomes uh, more and more difficult. Uh, luckily, there are more good guys than bad guys, so there are more algorithms that serve the good guys than the bad guys. Is this the type of new and emerging threat that you're seeing? Are there other types of emerging threats that, that we should be especially vigilant about? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, because um, everything now is remote. And of course, people used to accept remote connections. Uh, today, the combination of cybersecurity attack on, attacks on one hand and social engineering on the other hand uh, becomes something that is uh, much more uh, advanced and much uh, better developed. So they will use what they call a WebInt or OSINT, open source intelligence and web intelligence. And they will use tools that historically were only used by government agencies to collect information about people. Uh, so me, you, they will go to our social media, they will go to the web, they will go to uh, all the leaked uh, databases, and they will uh, build a, a digital profile, almost like a digital twin to each and every one of us. And then they will use this information to do some sort of social engineering on us, maybe sending us an email and help with hoping for a reply, maybe sending an, a WhatsApp, please uh, hit this link. And uh, they will uh, lure some of the people uh, to actually engage. And when people engage, then they will use a more uh, traditional cybersecurity attack to hack into the system, to send the malware, uh, to the mobile phone and then they will steal the money and again they will do it in a way that will be millions of microtransactions so they will do it in a way that people will not pay attention you know if somebody steals 25 cents from a bank account even if i'm suspicious i will not go through the hassle of reporting especially if somebody calls it itunes transaction and i am a big fan of uh, itunes just as an example so this combination becomes more and more uh, popular and the easiness of access today i can for 200 euros hire an, a system a hacking system that will try to hack into many accounts for uh, 300 euros i can ask somebody to hack into your uh, facebook account and get private information and historically it was done more to harass people and to sort of hold their privacy now we're doing it just because of the financial game it's one of those a fast growing professions where people make a lot of money, financial cyber criminals. So tell me, uh, what additional projects are on your near term product roadmap? We thought that we will help large banks to deal with fraud and money laundering, it will be enough. And of course, our system is generic, so we can go to additional verticals, and we love working with uh, IoT organizations, industrial IoT organizations as well. I have to tell you that in the world of financial services, Every time we think that we sort of hit the mark, we see more demand for additional solutions. One of the most recent ones is what we call correspondence banking, which is cross, basically cross-border transactions. Think about the fact that more and more transactions now happening uh, across countries. And historically, it was almost impossible to understand who you are you're dealing with. Let's say I would like to transfer a certain amount of money to Mr. Jones uh, in Yemen. How do you know that Mr. Jones is Mr. Jones and not one of the friends of Bin Laden? Right. You don't. So you go to an organization called SWIFT, which is in Belgium, and then they go uh, uh, to the local bank in Yemen, ask to validate that Mr. Jones is Mr. Jones, and then they get a validation, and then you transfer the money. But if it's Bin Laden, then the problem is yours. The problem is, is the problem of the U.S. bank. Now, how do I identify those pseudo identities, fake identities, uh, synthetic identities? That's what our new uh, correspondence banking product does. And it does it, as far as I know, we're one of the only companies that managed to crack this problem. And I have to say that suddenly the new digital banks are big fans of what we do because digital banks are branchless banks. 
and for them, the opportunity to serve people all around the world is the main um, uh, growth opportunity. So that's one of the examples that of a product or use case that didn't exist a year ago and now becomes very, uh, very popular. What advice do you have for our viewers about the future of fintech and the IoT in general as, as we all become increasingly engaged with what some people are calling the internet of everything. How can individuals and organizations stay secure and protect against threats? So you're absolutely right. It is an interesting, uh, it is an internet of everything. I think about the mobile phone. So one mobile phone is connected to the internet, but if your mobile phone has 100 applications, it's actually 100 small entities connected to the internet. And each entity in, uh, in potentially can listen to what you do, record your phone calls, open your camera, and transport, transfer information. So we today, surrounded by, even today, surrounded by hundreds of, hundreds of entities that uh, speak with each other. And obviously, bad guys, uh, uh, and they do understand, and they take advantage of this situation. And I think what really uh, helps them is that we become more and more dependent on those uh, uh, applications or systems. Think about Alexa, uh, Amazon Alexa, or uh, Google, uh, or Siri. We become less and less cautious because we are willing to hurt our privacy and our security uh, for the uh, added value of comfort. Um, and I know that some people say, look, do not install uh, Alexa at your home. Don't do mobile banking. I'm not a big fan of that. I think that it's impossible to stop. And, you know, mm -hmm. progress is something that helps everybody. Uh, so I do believe that, A, as human beings, we need to protect ourselves, installing the right software, uh, looking for uh, suspicious activities, the same way as we've done uh, when we were uh, in the physical world don't we, when we are in a physical world it's natural for us that uh, we sometimes travel to countries and but it's a new country so we, we, we are more cautious we cross the street but we understand that the dangers on the street so we look uh, right and left and left and right I think we really need to be cautious and understand that there are dangers in this uh, digital environment and develop the skills second and this is something that is more related to what we do I think there is a, a increasing demand by consumers uh, to make sure that the financial institutions make, take the necessary steps to protect them. So today, people will expect Wells Fargo to protect them, 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 themselves. And if Wells Fargo fails to do it, uh, they will punish. Uh, and just as an example, uh, of, you know, today Wells Fargo CEO, uh, expert, Wells Fargo CEO probably cannot be a banking CEO anymore, if I recall correctly. Uh, consumers today will punish organizations that will not try to protect themselves. If you have fraud uh, with your uh, Amazon account uh, or Uber account, uh, in many cases you can ask them uh, to participate, uh, maybe not legally, uh, but um, as a common business practice to keep them accountable. Uh, so I think that the large organizations need to use more and more of machine learning and artificial intelligence to make sure that there will be a digital system, a computer system that will uh, over a look at all those connections and identify threats. I think that we passed the time where human beings uh, could do it by themselves because of such a huge number of devices connected. Uh, machines that speak among each other, sometimes in a language but that we human beings don't even understand. We need machines to help us to be uh, and to live in a much safer world. That's interesting, Mark. I've, I've heard some people talk about the fact that in the consumer world, in the business to consumer world, it's natural to have these listening devices in our house and to have digital assistants that we can outsource things that we don't want to do anymore, mundane manual tasks and things like that. But not all of these conveniences have made their way to enterprises, mainly because of the concerns about security. And I'm just wondering, do you ever envision a future where the enterprise will have the same kind of excellent customer experience that we have 
in our lives, in our personal lives? Do you think that will ever translate to the enterprise? And will there ever be a type of security that keeps everybody safe without making them feel like they're locked down? A enterprises start to become, become more as a B2C organizations, not from the business point of view. And by the way, from the business point of view, some of them are B2C organizations, but also the way they uh, treat the employees. It started very naturally, be, uh, bring your own device. Uh, you know, we don't remember the time where you couldn't come with your mobile phone to, uh, to your company. And if you would come with your mobile phone, you would never be able to install any software that is an Android software on your mobile phone. Today, it's natural. Today, we use uh, WhatsApp or Slack just to communicate with each other. Business communication. We will be using Zoom uh, to have uh, uh, business-related communication. And so I think that the revolution has started. And also organizations understand that they need to treat their employees as customers. Uh, it's not customers and employees. It's internal and external employees. I treat my employees as they were my customers, and my job as a CEO is to serve them. And so I think it, has, it already has started. And today, again, thanks, or some people say, because of COVID-19 situation, actually more and more people learn how to work from home. And then their access to the enterprise is exactly the same internet VPN channel is their customers. Uh, so organizations are, have already started, enterprises have already started to look at the solutions that uh, were B2C solutions. Again, our solution is uh, more of a, a B2 capital B2C solutions. But they need uh, solutions that will allow them to provide the same level of service to the employees as it was uh, to their uh, customers. Thank you, Mark. This has really been very, very informative. It's great to reconnect and and to hear about all of your continuing innovations at Theta Ray. Thank you, thank you very much. It's exciting, it's a pleasure. Um, and you know, we discussed about the fact that there are so many uh, connected devices and it's just growing. And some people ask me, um, sort of summarize, uh, isn't it dangerous? Like you bring artificial intelligence. Uh, are you sure that you want to give those machines one thing that only human beings could do? Uh, artificial intuition and common sense and gut feelings or feelings at all. And my answer is that, and we discussed it here as well, any new technology created some fears. You know, when print was first created, people said, that's it, that's the end of human memory. And, uh, you know, when, uh, uh, when telephone was created, people said, that's it, no more meeting with friends, we can just call them. A car, when cars were created, People say that will ruin family units because people can, you know, drive. And we know that some people even today will not allow uh, use of the cars because of that. Uh, even internet. I built one of the first internet service providers and everybody told me, look, you don't understand. It will totally change the way your kids communicate with you, which, by the way, is true. <laughs> and in the world that we're discussing, the world of financial crime or financial cyber crime, I don't think we have any choice because bad guys use all types of AIs the AI, uh, artificial intelligence they can find. Um, they will not stop. So we as human beings not only have the right, but I think that we have an obligation actually to create those algorithms to build machines that will become our digital guards. And uh, they will help us to make our future safer. And I have to say that it's great to uh, work in a company that is growing fast, that uses amazing technologies. But it's also great uh, or even better to work in a company that makes this crazy world of connected machines and devices, a much, much safer world. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. Thank you for having me.